So a couple of them I've kind of planned out in my head a little bit. The other one, not so much. So the first one is going to be like an Asian stir fry inspired peanut butter sauce because I love peanut butter. Mm. Second one is going to be one. Did you do a welcome? You didn't like say hi no. to everybody. You're just like starting with the recipe. You can do the intro at the end. You DP, just can you tell my producer to, <laughs> to choose one or the other? Are we gonna? One of my favorite dishes. It's a mushroom dish, and you can pretty much riff on it however you like. So we're gonna do three versions of it. First one I've done before. It's a kind of fall flavored one with pecans, and I think we're gonna throw apples in this one. Second one is gonna be an Asian stir fry style one with peanut butter sauce and the third one is going to be like probably the healthiest of the three but it hasn't been fully formed in my mind yet um and it also now that i think about it is probably going to include bacon so let's start with the first which is that fall flavored one that i was talking about so i'm going to get a pan this is just for later shallot These things are always kind of a, you know what to pull off. I got this trick from Adam Ragusea. Thanks, Adam. He's a favorite YouTube cook of mine. And uh, he just peels off the first layer of the shower, which you're sacrificing some of it, but oh well. So I'm just gonna mince this. Shallot, as the Brits say. Shout out to you, Gordon Ramsay. You're my second father. Well, we're not quite done doing this one. I'm gonna heat up a burner to about medium high heat. And it doesn't matter too much uh, how big these are, you can dice them, you can mince them, whatever that means to you. I like to get them pretty fine, which means usually on a shallot of this size, about a medium size shallot, it's three deep and maybe four across. So I got my shallot prepared. I'll throw that away later. I'm not the most organized chef in the world. Well, I'm not a chef. I'm, I'm an at-home cook. But, <clears throat> take some olive oil, put it in that pan. Always have your pan hot, uh, preferably before you put the olive oil in. So I've actually got some pre-cut up mushrooms, but I'll show you kind of the style I do these mushrooms in. So I saved five. Uh, I already did about uh, 16 ounces of mushrooms. And again, it doesn't really matter. Mushrooms, they're going to be a lot smaller than they start. But basically, I just cut them into quarters. And then I kind of do this little fulcrum trick until they're also about minced. Yeah, that background noise is, is welcome, Court. Thanks. So it's not going to be even. That's just not how mushrooms go. A lot of them are going to be super thin. Um, but essentially do that kind of cut for all your mushrooms. And we're going to do the shallots first. So that oil looks like it's pretty hot. <laughs> and that's how you know it's hot. And then take, uh, this is a non-stick pan. It doesn't need to be non-stick, but that's probably preferable uh, for a mushroom dish like this because mushrooms tend to really stick to the bottom of the pan. Get yourself a wooden spoon or, you know. And so you're just going to let those fry off for a couple minutes. And so, like I said, a lot of this is kind of on the fly. Um, we've got some pecans. They're chopped already, but if you got them in halves or holes. I don't know if pecans come in holes, but chop them into pieces yourselves. Uh, bacon's for later. Be 
because it's in the spirit of fall, and because it's a fall flavor again, some maple syrup. And again with the fall, apple cider vinegar. No honey for now. Honey and maple syrup I find to be pretty much interchangeable. Not interchangeable, but you can use them both to sweeten the dish like this one. So if you like honey, throw it in there. If you adore honey, like a couple people I know. So you can see the pan is getting kind of dry. So the onions are almost to the point of burning. Just put a little more oil in there. There we go. That's better. And then... We got the pre-cut mushrooms, just like this one. And I'd say just enough to about fill the pan. And about a layer deep on this, I think it's a, I don't know, 11 inch pan or something, 12 inches. And mushrooms are gonna be, they're gonna kinda stick to the pan at first, be kinda dry. And then they'll get really wet. And then they'll get dry again. So it's gonna look like there's not enough moisture in there, but it'll come out. Take some salt of whatever kind you like. Knock the pepper on the ground. It's an important part. And also in honor of Lucas, I gotta do the uh, one of those for him. Here's the pepper. Just however much you want. That's always the taste, of course. See, there's that moisture you're seeing. And it'll allow you to loosen up the dish. And then essentially we're going to deglaze it with a couple of these things. But first, but first, take about maybe a third of a green apple. And you want these pretty small. Because the mushrooms, you saw how small we cut them, they're going to be even smaller because they shrink a ton. It's a sad fact of life, shrinkage. So I'm going to cut these into about as small pieces as I can tolerate. You could peel this. Um, green apples kind of have a waxy skin, but I'm not gonna, so it's up to you. And, you know, while the mushrooms still have a little bit of moisture, but they're starting to get some brown on them, that's when you can throw those bad boys in. And you can always make it as sweet or as unsweet as you like by using, um, you know, whatever you're using to sweeten the dish. So typically in a meal like this, I like to have something acidic. Um, that might come in the form of like lemon. We may even throw some lemon in there because we got some left over, but the main one to go with the apples, of course, is apple cider vinegar. So just a dash of that, it's probably about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. And it's gonna smell very vinegary. But you know, I just put that off as much as you need to. And then the other thing we have is some, I think this is Trader Joe's brand, an unpaid sponsor. Just a little bit of that. I like to start a little sparse with that. I put about, again, about a teaspoon in there, and that'll cook off too. Um, you don't want to do too much more than that. If it needs to be sweeter, you can always add more. And then, what else do you want to throw in there? Oh, the pecans. I probably, if I was thinking ahead, I would have roasted these beforehand, just on a dry pan on medium heat for about 10, 15 minutes. But I didn't do that, so we'll just throw a little handful in there. Pecans, this is the perfect example of something that, talk about like digging into the pantry. Uh, I've had these on hand for a while, but again, you know, nuts, they tell you not to keep for too long, but I don't mind. So that vinegar smell is starting to die down finally. 
Um, and we're pretty much getting there. You might throw a little bit of cayenne. Uh, just a dash, tiny bit. And then maybe a little bit of cinnamon. Does it fall just again? Put it in the other with your left hand. Ah, okay. Uh, your blind hand. Nice. Yeah. And then for a very special friend of mine, nutmeg. It's whole nutmeg. You can get this. Uh, you can get this ground already, and that's probably most common. But anytime you can get a, a spice fresh and uh, grind it right in front of you. I'm using a little microplane. You could use a, a box grater if you don't have one. Um, and we're about done. We just need to taste for salt, pepper. I like it. I don't think it needs anything. So. And that is a little fall mushroom medley, let's call it. With pecans, green apple, and uh, shallots. <laughs> no, <just> kidding. <laughs> Cut! All right, boom. That was good. Woo!